Sunday. Uh, the last day of the year, and I hope that as you look back over last year, 2017, you can remember some good peaks, you can remember some valleys perhaps, some challenges, and we have much to thank the Lord for, and, uh, and we do that in the wonderful name of Jesus and the powerful name as we just sang. Tomorrow begins a new year. And we need to, again, go into New Year with the expectation that uh, God is in control, He's sovereign, and uh, He is going to superintend, and uh, we'll talk about this morning a little bit. He certainly has a plan for you and for me, for our lives, for us as a church. This is an exciting year for us as we look forward to moving and so on. And so uh, lots of exciting things happening. This is the time of year when we start to think about New Year's resolutions, do we not? That's kind of a, a cultural uh, habit, probably. And uh, what are the kinds of things that we typically think about uh, in making resolutions? Well, I'm afraid that many, many times our New Year's resolutions um, are thought about outward things, are they not? Many of us think about some physical change. Well, if I could lose some weight. Uh, not too many people probably say, oh, if I could only gain some weight. Maybe a few. Um, or, you know, if I could just change something. Um, you know, if you had, if you had the, the opportunity to change anything about yourself that you'd like, what would it be? I think for some people, well, yeah, okay, I'd change something about my hair or looks or body shape or height or uh, you know, years whatever ago, it is during kind of World think War about II. those outward things first of all and then out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem to other people, right? because, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary do we not in a dark world to do with what we're going to accomplish a world that sometimes in 2018 I would like to accomplish some things and tragedy I'd like to improve this or I'd like to um, maybe work and we need to put on the armor of light or, 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 or out of thing we want to accomplish in this new well, year. So some of our resolutions. Amen. Thank you very much are for that beautiful, that. beautiful. Uh, well, maybe song. how we spend our time. It's good to have the children with us some today. Some say, well, I need to slow down Christmas in 2018, service, so and I need to take to more time off, here. and I need to all these hobbies that I don't ever get around to and uh, other things. Uh, maybe we say I need to spend more time with my family or my children or, or I need to go you know, visit my parents or Darkness. you know, whatever. Time, how I'm going to spend my time is sometimes part of our resolutions. Um, but how many of us, as part of our resolutions, say this is something that needs to change inside of me? In 2018, I would like to be less anxious, less worrisome, have less anger, less envy, less bitterness, less judgmental of other people, less hypocrisy in my life. I'd like to be less impatient. I need to be have a less critical tongue or the words that I say. I need to be have experience less discontentment, maybe less lust, less stubbornness. I need to deal with a quick temper. Last Sunday we talked about the darkness pride, and it's on down hard the list we could go. Things that maybe need to change inside of us, the real me, the characteristics of my myself. Maybe I need to, in 2018, move to love others more. Uh, I need to be more honest, maybe with myself, with other people. I need not need to care so much about protecting Darkness. You know, what I think is my important reputation. I need to be more honest with people. I need to be more accepting of change. I'm not so resistant to change and want things always the same way. I need to increase my ability to trust in God's plan for me. Whatever that is, whatever curves in the road, whatever bumps, whatever hills, valleys, I need to be able to trust him. Uh, maybe more time spent in prayer or studying God's word and understanding it and meditating in his word and obeying God's will, whatever it is. Those would be great, worthy 
resolutions in 2018. Would they not? And how many times do we really think about making those kind of internal, spiritual, character issue changes? Darkness. But I have a bit Last of Sunday challenging news Last Sunday we talked about the darkness, and it's hard for us those to even imagine. Those kind of inside changes are often... How dark the darkness would be without Jesus Christ. In fact, they're the True harder story. things to change. Actually, it's wow. probably easier. So to it was meet that while they were there, the days were completed change for her inside. to be delivered. And how we think and how we don't want to um, be yoked together with them because we're, 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 we're different. We're going to a different direction. Trust in God and so on. It's a very, very Most important people concept. Change very we stand slowly. out again. if they change at all, and often. That change is necessitated, or the only reason we do change, we stand out, is because we have major challenges which cause us to change. We want to be challenged today as we go out from this celebration um, that we will be really the light that yourself, we need to be. Say, well, yeah, there are some areas which I really need to improve. Everyone have your I candle. Need to change the real me. I really would desire that. That would be good. That would have some good Once again, consequences we're going to dim in my own life, so that, good in my um, relationships with other people. Will shine but in how the am I going to do that? I'm going to make that kind of change. It's easier for us to change other things. And that's why we tend to, in the new year, say, well, it's easier to change other things in the circumstances of my life. Loving carnelle. Or a new car, or a new house, or a different job, we stand or out. different friends, or a new boyfriend, or girlfriend, or, or a, a Everyone facelift, have or whatever. Candle. Those kind of circumstances of change. That's easier for us to make, and that's often once where again we focus. we're going to dim the lights. So I want to focus um, this morning on making some internal in changes, whatever that might be that God would would call upon for us to make in the year 2018 to become a better person, to become, as the goal is biblically, more like Jesus Christ. Now that would be a worthy resolution. That would be a worthy uh, change to make in our life. How does God want us to change? If you take your Bibles and open them with, to me with Romans, to Romans chapter 12, very familiar verses, verses 1 and 2, but talk to us about real spiritual change. And I thought it would be good for us to focus on those verses this morning as we begin tomorrow, a new year, and hopefully are willing and We'll discipline ourselves, commit ourselves to growing in Christ. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, we want to look today at making lasting changes in our lives, not only for the year 2018, but hopefully for, uh, that will carry on the rest of our life. God will work during this new year to transform us on the inside, to make us more like Jesus Christ. And that is the ultimate goal. That is the most important goal you and I could think about. Now, we're already positionally in Jesus Christ where we need to be. If you're thinking this morning, well, I, I really wish I was more secure in Jesus Christ. I, I really wish I knew that he um, loved me, uh, that he was with me. I wish I would feel close to him every day. I'm sorry to inform you, but that's kind of a waste of time. All of that is already settled. When you put your trust in Jesus Christ, your faith in Jesus Christ is your own way to heaven, you have the most secure relationship with him you could ever hope to have, and it will never really improve. Yes, someday physically we'll be in his presence for eternity, but the position we have is settled. God will never love you. He'll never love me any more than he does right now. He is always with us, no matter where we go. You can go to passages like, you know, Psalm 139. There's no way we can get away from him, no matter where we might go in this world. He's always there with us. 
The Holy Spirit's living inside of us, constantly waiting to, for us to cooperate with him and to, uh, if we allow him to fill us and control us, to work through us, use us, minister through us. All of those things are settled. You and I don't have to waste any time you know, worrying about that or wondering about that. Our position is set. Now you say, well, yeah, but my feelings. I don't always feel his presence. I don't always feel used by him. I don't always feel like I'm, I'm secure and, and so on. You know, I was challenged lately uh, reading. The Bible says very precious little about how you and I feel. In our culture, we put so much emphasis on, I feel this and I feel that. The Bible says very little about feelings. It's obedience. It's doing the things we need to do. It's realizing and knowing the position we have. And so the good news this morning is that the position we have is totally secure. It's never going to change in 2018. No matter what happens in your life or our world or our culture, that position is set for eternity. So we don't need to worry about that. But we do need to worry about or concentrate on inner spiritual change. God wants to change our heart, our mind, our will, so that all of our actions, words, attitudes, and motivations are affected. That would be his New Year's resolution for each and every one of us, that we become more Christ-like. Now again, too many times we are satisfied to try and change only the outward appearance. And I don't mean now the physical appearance. Yes, many of our New Year's resolutions have to do with that. But I now talk about how we look to people. You know, we're more concerned that I don't come off looking proud to someone than whether I really am proud inside, secretly. That God, who knows my thoughts, my motivations, my uh, everything that, that affects me, does God see pride in me. We're more willing to uh, talk about, I hope that other people sense that I'm loving to them, that they don't, don't sense judgmental or um, a judgmental spirit in me or, or whatever, rather than focus on, do I really love this person that's maybe a little different than me, that, you know, maybe is, has different um, characteristics and, and skills than I do, and maybe we don't see eye to eye on everything, and um, there are some people that it's maybe not as easy for us to love. Do I really love them with God's love, the kind of love he wants me to have? Easier for us to focus on, how do I come across, than what's really in my heart? And some of us need to be challenged and reminded that no matter how hard we try to cover up, maybe to put on a certain face, Sometimes what we really, really feel accidentally comes out. So it'd be much better for us to focus on our true love for people and so on, the inner self. And that will show then. Ephesians 5.18, we talk about the, um, you know, the Holy Spirit being in control of our life. And then the fruits of the Spirit show in our life and in our relationships. The fruits of the Spirit are, of course, His godly characteristics. And if I allow Him to really control me, then His characteristics shine through. And that is the goal. So we need to be focused on changing our inner, inner being. God is committed enough to your and my inner change this year that he will use the difficulties this year will bring to accomplish his will. Yes, we will face challenges in this year of 2018. Some of them maybe you already know about. Some of them you already have kind of, um, hmm, I wonder. Some of them we don't know at all. Some of them will be surprises. But God has a design for your life and mine in 2018, and he is so focused, it is so important to him that you and I grow to be like Christ. It's so important that we change on the inside spiritually that he will use tough circumstances perhaps. 
surprising things in your life and mine in order to bring about change. Now, you and I need to respond to that. We need to cooperate with that in order to bring about that change. You know, when a tough thing comes to your life and mine, we make a choice how we're going to respond to it, right? And sometimes we become bitter. And there are many, many people in this world saying, how could God have possibly fill in the blank, whatever. Well, God is trying to use those things. He redeems everything, right? He wants to make everything uh, a positive in our life if we cooperate with him and if we're willing to grow from them and to change. And so that's our challenge, to uh, face those challenges, setbacks, disappointments, whatever it might be. We, you and I might experience inadequacies, maybe failures. Why? So that we learn to trust God more. That's what God wants. You and I might experience loss of some kind. Could be a person, a loved one, could be a job, could be, you know, whatever. Uh, we experience loss, and God wants to use that to keep our priorities upon spiritual things, not other things that maybe, you know, we tend to depend on too much. We might experience disappointment in year, this year, 2018, so that we can learn to keep our eyes more on God faithfully rather than other people. People disappoint us. So, God wants us to realize this morning as we face this new year that the only lasting change is transformation from the inside out. All those New Year's resolutions, and someone has said, you know, New Year's resolutions are nothing but a, um, a kind of to-do list for the first week of the year. <laughs> Well, because many of them fall by the wayside. <laughs> or if we do make progress, you know, if you're going to, um, I don't know, whatever it is, uh, lose weight or whatever, well, too often uh, that isn't permanent, is it? Lasting change is a spiritual transformation. And that's where we ought to be focused. And that's where the writer of Paul writing in Romans 12 wants us to focus. So, we need to focus on that. God wants us to sacrifice ourselves for his glory in 2018. So again, verse 1, I beseech you or beg of you. Maybe some of your translations say that. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, it's only by his mercies that we even have a choice of presenting ourselves to him as something acceptable. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's not an easy concept. None of us really want to be a sacrifice. None of us really want to sacrifice. We want to do what we feel like doing. We want to do what benefits us. We want to do what's most important to us when it's most important to us. Sacrifice. Doing what benefits someone else. A living sacrifice. Oh, in the Old Testament, they had deadly animal sacrifices, did they not? God wants us to be a living sacrifice. And that's a consistent, constant, day by day, every day of the year throughout 2018. I want to be a sacrifice. I want to do what God wants me to do rather than what I want to do. And we are very tempted, in our culture at least, to say, well, what I feel like doing is, must be what God wants me to do because that's the feeling I have. Ah, oh, very us-centered. Rather than saying, what does God want me to do with this year? What does God want me to do with this week? What does God want me to do with this day? How can I use it for his glory, for his kingdom, not mine? What does God want me to do in my role, in my family? What does God want me to do at work? What does God want me to do in this certain relationship? What would be best for him? Sometimes that also involves what's best for another person. Sacrificial. Um, you know, you can imagine if you uh, put an animal on the uh, altar to sacrifice it in the Old Testament, if it wasn't killed first or if it wasn't tied on the altar, uh, it's going to do everything to get off that altar. How many times do you and I crawl off that altar. And we're not the living sacrifice we need to be. No, I don't want to be here now. I want to do something else. I want to do it my way. A living sacrifice. 
That's what we need to be, to present our bodies. Now, bodies there is not just physical. Uh, our body is the way we live. So um, it's not only the things we do, but the words we say and every part of us. That's how we, uh, that's how we live. Present our whole self, our whole body, including the inside of us, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Again, it's only because the powerful Jesus Christ that we sang about. It's only the, the song we sang about what he did for us. Came as a little baby. Yes, we just celebrated that as Christmas. To die, to go to the cross and pay the penalty so that you and I could be forgiven. So that we can have a righteous standing and relationship with God. So that we can be used by God. So that we can be in a relationship with the creator of the universe. It is by his mercy that you and I can be a sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Which is your reasonable service? It's not heroic. It's not fantastic. It's not something way out of the ordinary. It's your reasonable service. Jesus died for you. He paid the ultimate price. And so it's reasonable that we serve him in thanksgiving. So, you and I need to be uh, willing to have God change us, a sacrifice. You know, I think of an ambassador in another country. It's amazing. Many of us could not even name who the ambassadors are, even in some very important countries in this world. Ambassadors for our government in the United States. We can't even name them. We don't know who they are. But they are there, living in a foreign culture, they are there serving our government, our president, our administration, representing them. And in many ways, their job is not easy. If there's a difficult message to take to, let's say, a, a, another world leader of a, another country, our ambassador often is charged to take that and communicate that message. And it might be a difficult message. It might be a message that's not re, re, re it's not received very well. There might be pushback. If that world leader and his government is not really liking this message or this, not in agreement with it, they're probably not going to call up our president and yell and scream at him on the phone. But they probably will to the ambassador, right? He's probably going to hear it. Sometimes their lives are in danger in these countries. In a way, what they're doing is sacrificial. They're doing something in, you know, representing our government, in the name of our government, our president, and they don't receive very much credit. In fact, if our relationship with the country uh, improves and some deal is made, something is accomplished that we wanted to see accomplished and whatever, who gets the credit for that? Not that ambassador. You don't even hear his name. It's probably our government or our president or state department or whatever. A sacrificial person. And you and I need to sacrificially represent Jesus Christ that way. Not that we are the hero, not that we do things that are going to, we're going to get the credit, but that Jesus Christ gets the credit. It's him that we represent in this world in which we live. We are servants of his kingdom. So for you, for me to say, how can I serve Jesus Christ in the year 2018 as his representative, as his ambassador, to accomplish something for his kingdom, to better, to um, make people, to lift him up, glorify him, to uh, make him the light of the world, to, to sh let people see what he's offering them and what he can do in their lives and the difference he can make to represent him. That would be a worthy goal for 2018. And so it's how you and I should set out to spend our energy and time and money and skills to be used sacrificially for God's kingdom. And that means that sometimes, many times, we need to sacrifice, say no to, our own goals and desires and dreams in order to become what God wants us to be. That's what it means to be a sacrifice. Now, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. Let's stop right there. 
Confirmation does not work long term. Uh, it's not confirmation. Conforming. Confirmation does not work long term. That's where you and I spend, you know, a lot of our energy. I, we just want to conform to a certain image that the world wants me to be. I want to be accepted. I want to be popular. I want to be liked. And so I'm going to conform to what other people want me to be. Um, to conform means to kind of, um, kind of shape yourself um, into something maybe you really aren't. We think about, well, you go to a wedding. And they usually have mints there, don't they? And they're usually in some kind of form. They usually are leaves or flowers or something. And that's because that soft material was pressed into a mold under pressure. And when it comes out, it looks like that. Conform. The world wants to conform you to what it wants. And there's great pressure. And the Bible tells us it comes, of course, from three sources, doesn't it not? Satan is behind it. He wants to conform you to what he wants you to be. The world itself wants to conform us because they don't like differences. They don't like someone to be different. People in your neighborhood, people in your workplace, people in your school, people in your neighborhood, they don't want you to stand out and be different and be a shining light. They try to tear you down or they try to get you to be like them so that um, they don't have to feel bad. So the world tries to conform us. And then, of course, our own flesh inside tries to conform us to what is easy, to what's acceptable. And we have these little voices inside that whisper, don't do that. Don't speak out for Jesus Christ. Don't stand up for God's ethics in this kind of case. Don't, 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 don't make any waves. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, a little voice says, to know that uh, the response might not be good to that. You might not be liked very well. So those forces are trying to conform us, to make us to be in their mold. And sometimes we go along with that and we see some benefit to that. But confirmation, <laughs> conformation, doesn't work. It doesn't change us from the inside. It's not permanent. Conformed refers to the act of an individual assuming an outward expression that does not come from inside him or within him. Nor is it representative of his inner heart life. And too many times, the kind of resolutions that we make or changes we try to bring about are not really changing us on the inside, the real us. They're just a conformation, trying to conform us to what we think would be better approved, would maybe benefit us. So... Romans 12, 2 goes on and say, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation, only transformation of our mind will work for the long haul. Will darkness. really make the necessary change you and I need. Last now, you're Sunday probably we talked aware about the that this word in the hard Greek is really imagine. metamorphosis. And we oh, see dark, the, the illustration there, what Jesus we understand, Christ. the caterpillar way on the left. True story. Slowly through Many metamorphosis, ago, the process of II. spinning this chrysalis around the Nazis and invaded out as a butterfly. City of Volgograd in Russia. All the details of that. Talk to uh, and Natasha. a family. Okay, they watch this. Ludmila was many times. twelve years old. Every her father, every her mother, her brothers right and sisters. Season. You look at the that Nazis caterpillar. Arrested you this family. You put that caterpillar on your because table. Ludmila's father was and a you tailor. Look at that and you and say they needed someone that to thing repair. Army uniforms. I mean, if you didn't know about metamorphosis, and when they were say, finally forced to retreat out of Volgograd, this fly? You, they no took way. this family the with lunch. them you as they retreated. This thing, okay? They it's forced the father to in walk way, in the snow with crawl, only slowly. socks, no All boots. All it does is crawl and eat. That's it. And he tells a story of ah, but in how the DNA, God set them free. Is the and as they came back then as a family to the city of Volgograd, they found this city to be in total become ruins. a beautiful butterfly. With in wings. fact, they didn't see any they light fly. at all. They didn't see any life at you all. I, During the daytime, they thought they were the only family and there. And they searched us. to find and their house, there, the rubble of we their house, to see person. if there was something We have that position that with they Jesus could Christ. Say. And the Holy Spirit's within us. And he's Night as powerful came. now as he's ever been. There was no place to go. 
There's a they lot he wants right to do through together. you and through me in 2018. Then the father found a lantern. But without metamorphosis. And he lit that lantern. It can't happen. Transformation. Change on the inside. Changing the real us. That they decided to huddle That's around what God is concerned that about. lantern and wait out the night. Now, it's a gradual change on the inside for this caterpillar. Now, if you were in total darkness total and you saw on the outside, one light. No, the caterpillar cannot fly in its present state. But flying. What would be your response? Yeah, it was programmed by God to do that someday. We are drawn. But it needs to be transformed to one into something single light. that it presently isn't. And as they sat there in the darkness around that lantern, when they that began to hear changed into a beautiful butterfly, small noises. Then it becomes what God Always couldn't see anything in the be. darkness. And just like that, but you then and I finally, were born again spiritually, out we have of a new life, stepped a new relationship with God. We have built We've into our spiritual that light, DNA the ability to do and then more great people. things for the kingdom of God. One by one, people begin to join but this little change. family around that we need this one metamorphosis. Lantern. Because then, they were drawn well, to the God light really transform the real that us. they can he has use seen us as he really needs to that was us. unique in the darkness. Transformation, another place in the Bible true that story. we see you a and great I, illustration of that in the word is in used, a dark world is the transfiguration to the light of, of Jesus Christ. Christ. And today we get Three to celebrate. Disciples. Went up and this tomorrow, and saw that Jesus coming Christ of Jesus Christ. Be Let me read for you. Figured. Luke. Chapter Mark 2, nine, two through three, starting verse 4. Quickly. Joseph now, also days, went up Jesus from Galilee, Peter, James, and out of the city of Nazareth, into mountain, Judea, to the city of David, which is called he was Bethlehem, transfigured because he was of the house and lineage word, of David, concept. to be registered his with Mary, his became shining, exceedingly white, white like snow, who was with such child. as no launderer on So it was, that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. This was a unique experience. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped Jesus him in really swaddling in clothes. Divinity. Now, Jesus didn't change. He didn't become someone else but Jesus. He didn't lose his humanity at all. He's still Jesus Christ. But they got to see a better picture <laughs> of who like Jesus it. Christ was on the inside. We know Philippians chapter 2. She Nine wrapped him in 11, swaddling Jesus clothes and laid him in a manger because himself. there was no room came for them to earth in the as a man became human. No, there were in the same country shepherds, some of that glory living in the fields. That's a part of being watch over their flocks God. by night. And here on this and behold, an angel of the Lord got a shown. An angel of the Lord stood the before them, and the glory of the Lord and stood and around the them, shone really around them, and they were greatly afraid. You and I get another glimpse of that, of course, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter one, describing who Jesus. Then Christ the angel is said to them, "Do not be yeah, afraid, for saints. behold, I bring you good so, tidings of great joy, but for that brief which time, will be to these three all disciples people. Saw, for there is born to you this day we in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In order to show the and world, and this will be the sign to you." True you will find identity. a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, We're to be lying in a manger. I mean, the people and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, they need to be able Glory to, to God in the highest, true and on earth, identity. peace, now, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had Jesus gone away Christ from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and say this thing that was come to pass. They need which to the Lord has Jesus made Christ. known to we us. Need to be and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph God and the babe lying in a manger. Of us into now when they had seen him, they made us. widely known the saying, which that was told them That doesn't mean that all of us are going to look exactly the same. We're going to have the same godly characteristics. Fruits of the Spirit are the same for everybody. But Last we're Sunday, going to uniquely have we read the prophecy and and God from Isaiah unique, about this we're going to have great a big light unique coming. Display of God, seen him, God's they made widely the known the saying which was told An illustration. concerning this In the year 1464, child. a sculptor named Agostino di Duccio last Sunday began working on a we huge read the prophecy piece of flawed marble, from Isaiah about intending this to produce a magnificent sculpture coming. of an old now Testament read prophet again. for a cathedral in Florence, Isaiah Italy. chapter 9. It's different he labored life. for two I'll get your years, candles, okay? Then find your candles. That was 1476. Everyone had your in 1476, stand out. Antonio Rossellini 
started to work on the same piece of Are people who and watch us live abandon it also who listen to our words who many years go by in 15 watch how we do things and 26 year old and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men to produce that something they may wild. see your good that works enormous and glorify marvel, your father father which was now in heaven the giant. luke 8 16 no one as when he is little work, lamp covers it with a vessel or puts it under the, the bed that had but sets it on a lamp spot, including it is here to Leonardo shine as his lights he in this world. To turn that part of the so that people, Jesus fault in the broken, we are to shine as with victory in the family the right lives thing. of our family as the rest his he on lights for years in this until world. He produced and light. the incomparable David. In a dark statue. world, do you stand out? And if you look at the bottom, out, you the can great see light God sent to us behind that leg. He had to use that to, uh, because of the flaw in the marble. That's how he overcame it. Now today, the 17-foot tall statue stands on display at the Academia Gallery in Florence, where people come from around the world to view it. More than a masterpiece, it is one of the greatest works of art ever produced. And it has been said that there is no statue more perfect. How did he do it? Here's the answer in his own words, Michelangelo. In every block of marble, I see a statue as plain as though it stood before me, shaped and perfect in attitude and action. I have only to hew away the rough walls that imprison the lovely apparition to reveal it to the other eyes as mine see it. Just like that block of marble, all of us, our works in progress, are we not? Said in more colloquial terms, I cut away everything, Michelangelo says, I cut away everything that didn't look like David. God is in the purpose, in the, in the process, this year in 2018, starting tomorrow, to cut away from you, from me, everything that doesn't look Christ-like that doesn't match the, the person that he wants us to be, the light he wants us to be for him. And he's in that process. All of us are works in process. We are not finished. We are not glorified yet. We're not perfected. We're not completed. We're all under construction. And I must remind you that construction is messy. It's noisy, sometimes painful. You go to a construction site, it's a mess, it's muddy, it's, you know, if, you, if you're not the architect, if you're not looking for the plan, at the plan, you really wonder, what is this going to turn out to be? Maybe some of the builders even doing their own little part don't really understand the whole picture. But in the mind's eye of that artist, they have a goal. You look at Mount Rushmore. Heads of four presidents on a huge mountain, 60 feet tall, each face. Those workers up there. But in the eyes of Guts and Borglum, he had a picture, a model of something he was going for. And he was removing unnecessary stone in order to reveal what he wanted to see on that mountain. God is in the process, in your life and mine, of removing what is not Christ-like, and that will be transformation. That will change us. So you and I must allow God to reprogram our minds. That's what verse tw uh, 2 says. We must be transformed by the renewing of your mind, not your outward appearance, not pretending. By your mind, how you think, who you really are that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, of course, Satan would argue and say, oh, this is, can't be good for you. This is painful. Why would God allow this in your life? This isn't a good plan. I could think of a better one. You could too. This can't be perfect. All those arguments. But God's word says, no, it's good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. How God is trying to change us. Too much of the time, you and I focus on how we feel. No, God is making us into something special that he wants to use. And even though you and I know God wants 
asked me to do some things or be some things or say some things or represent him in some ways, often it's easy for us to say, mm, I don't feel like doing that. God can't want me to do that. That, that, would be, that would be out of ordinary. That'd be too hard. And so we resist that change. And someone has likened it. If you were a sculpture that, a sculpture that God is working on, um, at least in marble, a sculptor can work one day and maybe he makes this hand, okay? And he's got it perfect. This is the way he wants it. And he comes back the next morning and it's still there. Well, you and I, in, in, in God's sculpture, often we mess it up. You know, you can think about God coming, changing something in our life, and we learn something, and a week later he comes back and says, what happened to that? I thought I had that perfected. <laughs> now, you and I need to cooperate with God, right? And see this, understand this process for what it is. If he's changing how we think and how we uh, act and what words we say and our motivations and all, we want that transformation to be perfect We want or, or permanent. We want to uh, work along with him. We need to understand the process. Desire must be contained or combined as we come to these kind of resolutions. God changed me. Desire needs to be combined with discipline. You know, Dr. Charles Ryrie recommended the following equation for the Christian life. There it is. A formula for spiritual growth. What does it mean? Well, the T stands for time. The HH, habits of holiness. Time plus habits of holiness equal spiritual growth. That was his formula that he taught. It still works today. As you and I practice habits of holiness and be every day like Jesus Christ wants us to be, and uh, in order to do that, we spend time studying his word and praying and, and, um, and, and being what he wants us to be and saying the things the way he wants us to say and so on. Over time, we grow spiritually. That changes that. That transforms us. Changes our thinking. The transformation of one's mind takes time, and it takes determination to develop these habits of holiness. Perhaps we're now better equipped to make some very important New Year's resolutions. I hope tomorrow, as you think about, how, how do, what do I want to be different? How do I want to change in 2018? I hope it doesn't stop with just some outward little thing. I hope we'll be challenged to say, God, how can I become more Christ-like in 2018? What are the things in my life that are not Christ-like that need to be chipped away off of this old block of marble? What are the imperfections? And we give God permission and cooperate with him to change us. A renewing of our mind, transformation, darkness, to become what he wants us to be. Rather than last Sunday, we talked about the darkness, and it's hard so for us to even imagine. So we've seen today that making lasting changes is only possible How with dark transformation. The darkness would be God will Jesus work Christ. during this new year to transform us on the inside. True story. To make us more like Many years Jesus ago, during Christ. World War II, I want to close with the Nazis invaded of a city of Volgograd in Russia. This happens to be the gravestone and of a family. Ruth Ludmila was Graham, 12 years Graham's old. Wife. Her father, her mother, her brothers and, and sisters. And there it is. And if you can see the on Nazis the bottom, you can see her name on the top. arrested this family the bottom, it, because Ludmila's father was a tailor End of and they needed someone to repair thank you for army uniforms. Patient. And when they were finally forced to retreat out of Volgograd, Life. were under construction to become more Christ-like, to become what God wants us to become. If you and I are still breathing in whatever part of 2018 we reach, there will be some godly construction still going on inside of you and inside of me. Our goal is not to resist it, but to welcome it, encourage it, discipline ourselves to willingly help that process along. Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ, his powerful name in which we pray, in which we have our forgiveness, our relationship with you. Thank you for sending him so that he could die on the cross and pay the penalty for our sin. That we can be forgiven. That we can be redeemed. That we can have eternal life as a gift from you. That we can have an ongoing relationship. That the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us and is wanting to change us and use us and show his characteristics through us. And as we come to this New Year's Eve and face tomorrow a brand new year, and we think about 
what might God want to do in my life with me, with my family, with the things for which I'm responsible for, the relationships for which I'm responsible and have a part in? What might God want to change in me? We pray that we'd be willing to, to set out and commit and then discipline ourselves to allow God's word to change our minds and make us, change us on the inside, not just on the outside. Make us more Christ-like. That would be your goal for us, God. And I pray that we would, would folk, understand the process and then focus on helping you and allowing you to change and making that change last so that we can come to the end of 2018 and look back and say, okay, time plus habits of holiness has produced some spiritual change in my life. And that is extremely valuable. And so, Father, as we come into this new year, we commit it to you. We don't know what we face. We don't know what our world will experience and face. We don't know what our country will face. But we know that you are sovereign and you are in control and you're working out your plan. And you've already told us in prophecy where all of this is leading. And we are simply a part of that. And you want to change us individually and use us in special ways if we will allow ourselves to be used. And Father, as a church, we commit this year to you and the change that is coming not only moving to a new building, but ministering to a new neighborhood, to reach out to people, to seek to, in a better way, be a lighthouse and make, raise up the name of Jesus Christ and what he has done and what he offers, the salvation that he offers to people who need to put their faith in him. So, Father, we pray that you would change us and use us and be able to use us as we'll be willing to change and be that living sacrifice that you would have us be. So bless us this year and help us to enter it with the right goals and the right frame of mind for what you want to do in Jesus' name. Amen.